Hello, everybody. This is Joseph P. Farrell with News and Views from the Nefarium on Thursday, August 27th, 2020. And today is going to be unusual because I'm going to read most of an article that I just received in my inbox today from VT. Thank you, VT. An article by Patrick Fagan in The Critic. Okay. And it's about mask mandates. And uh, the reason I'm doing that is we had a local election here recently where our local rhino mayor, for those of you overseas, a rhino is a Republican in name only. <laughs> Think Senator John McCain, the late Senator McCain. Um, and this mayor has been crucial in ramming through a citywide mask mandate two days after his re-election a couple days ago. We're already hearing from the county health czar, a man who, can, who mangles his pronunciation of the English language like nobody's business, uh, is now already calling for a countywide mask mandate, and they're even talking about a statewide mask mandate where I live. So, I decided I've had it up to my earlobes with this nonsense. I want to read you one of the most thoughtful articles with a lot of arguments that you would not even think about in terms of these mask mandates. But first, let me get my anti-COVID cigarette going here. Don't forget, smoking helps uh, ward off the virus. And to you anti-smoking fascists out there that like to complain about just don't smoke it around me because it stinks, well, chances are I'm never going to rub shoulders with you people anyway, <laughs> so don't worry about it. But anyway, um, while I'm warding off the virus having my cigarette here, I'm going to take the unusual step today and read you most of this article. I'm going to limit my commentary uh very, very much today because I think this article speaks for itself, but I do want you to put the things that this gentleman says in this article into the context of what you're seeing happen in the United States right now with all of these riots and so on. This article stitches together the rioting, the antisocial behavior, the outright uh, looting of property and, and double standard in, in law, it connects it directly to what we see going on with the uh, Fauci, uh, Lieber, Wuhan virus narrative. The article is from The Critic magazine. It's by Patrick Fagan. It was put up online on the 28th of July in 2020. It's titled... Face masks make you stupid. <laughs> and here we go. And I'm just going to read the, the uh, paragraphs that I've marked here, seriatim, in the article. I'm not reading the whole article, but I'm reading a good chunk of it for you. In Yost Merlu's analysis of false confessions and totalitarian regimes, the rape of the mind, he coins a phrase for the dumbing down of critical resistance, menticide. Quote, in the totalitarian regime, he wrote, the doubting, inquisitive, and imaginative mind has to be suppressed. The totalitarian slave is only allowed to memorize, to salivate when the bell rings, unquote. And you might use that as a comment against standardized testing anyway. <laughs> I, I just tossed that in there. Continuing. Neolithic man had a similar problem dealing with his livestock. Homo sapiens success has been relied not insignificantly on cattle, their dairy meat, leather, and manure. Yet the cow's ancestor, the Arach, was quite a different beast. It was fast, aggressive, dangerous, hardly conducive to be corralled into predictable channels of behavior. So about 10,500 years ago, man started to deliberately breed the most docile Arachs for domestication. The key word here, is docile, which comes from the Latin docere, meaning to teach, as does, say, doctorate or document. Being docile means being compliant and following commands, which means submitting to a system of thought. 
Whereas animals, however, typically need to be bred to have a higher level of reasoning to be taught commands, human beings, already being quite smart, need to be dumbed down. You won't disobey an order if you lack the cognitive ability to question it. This is particularly pertinent to the smooth running of the modern system, which relies, pardon me, which relies, um, now I lost my place here, uh, do, 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 do. Well, anyway, you won't disobey an order if you lack the cognitive ability to question it. This is particularly pertinent to the smooth running of a modern world system, which relies on millions of individual souls, each with their own nuanced life history and perspective, thinking and acting in the same way. The empirical literature, here we go has shown that compliance and suggestibility are negatively related to intelligence. See Good Johnson, 1991. He lists all these articles, and I'm going to read them to you. You can look at the article itself. I will link it to this, and you can look at these articles he's citing. In consumer psychology, there is even a technique called disrupt, then reframe. Bamboozle people first, and they'll be more likely to buy what you're selling C. Davis and Knowles, 1999. Ultimately, the common denominator for increasing suggestibility is switching off executive function in the prefrontal cortex, disabling the superego, the, conscious, the consciousness, and the internal monologue. Without Jiminy Cricket on his shoulder, Pinocchio would never have become a real boy. He would have always remained a puppet. Modern society is shot through with things that make us similarly dumb, literally unable to speak. Skipping a few paragraphs. Face masks can now be added to the list of mandates that make you stupid. As if Pierce Morgan feverishly promoting them weren't evidence enough... Here are the facts on why you absolutely categorically should not wear a face mask. They make you suggestible. They make you more likely to follow someone else's direction and do things you wouldn't otherwise do. In short, they switch off your executive function, your conscience. A great example comes from a study by Mathis and Guest, 1976, who asked participants how willing they would be and how much they would have to be paid to carry a sign around the university cafeteria reading, Masturbation is Fun. This being 1976, doing such a thing would be considered embarrassing. These days, it would probably earn you a college course credit. The results showed that when people wore a mask, they were more likely to carry the sign and required less money to do so. $30 as compared to $48 on average. The effect has similarly been found online. The online distribution effect refers to the tendency for people to act antisocially when anonymous online, see Suler, 2004. There's even an infamous trolling movement calling itself anonymous and using a mask as its symbol. The disinhibiting effects of wearing a mask are described by psychologists in terms of a suspension of the superego's control mechanisms, allowing subconscious impulses to take over. Sagra, 1989, wrote that masks shortcut conscious defense systems and encourage massive regression to a more primitive state. Castle, 1986, wrote that 18th century masquerades allowed mask wearers to release their repressed hedonistic and sexual impulses. Think eyes wide shut, folks. And Calois, 1962, similarly wrote about European mask carnivals involving libidinal activities, including, quote, indecencies, jostling, provocative laughter, exposed breasts, mimicking buffoonery, a permanent incitement to riot, feasting and excessive talk, noise, and movement, unquote. 
In the 12th century, Pope Innocent III, I, I prefer to call him Pope Not-So-Innocent III, banned masks as part of his fight against immorality. And in 1845, New York State made it illegal for more than two people to wear masks in public after farmers wore masks to attack their landlords. From a neuroimaging perspective, masks are known to inhibit identity and impulse control, both associated with executive function in the prefrontal cortex. For example, see Glenn in 2005, Tosikowski, Berger, and Erson, 2017. In other words, masks silence the Jiminy Cricket in the brain. It is little wonder that covering our mouths would shut us up psychologically. Studies have shown that clothing has a powerful effect on how we think or not via a principle known as enclosed cognition. Wearing a lab coat enhances cognitive function. See Adam and Galinsky, 2012. Wearing a nurse's scrubs increases empathy. See Lopez Perez and others, 2016. And wearing counterfeit brands increases the likelihood of cheating in a test. See Gino, Norton, and Ariely, 2010. Similarly, in the world of body language, someone putting their hand over their mouth is a sign that they are listening intently. They are ready to receive information, not to question it. There is also a more basic reason masks might make you stupid. Decreasing oxygen flow to the brain. Face rails reduce ventilatory function in the long term. See al Ghadir, Ali, and Zafar, 2012. And surgical masks may reduce blood oxygenation among surgeons. See Bader and others, 2008. And incidentally, I might toss in this brief remark that there are studies that indicate the coronavirus thrives in a hypoxiated, oxygen-poor environment, such as breathing in lots of carbon dioxide in your own face mask. <laughs> Believe it or not, covering your mouth makes it harder to breathe. Reviewing the N95 face mask, a 2010 study, C. Roberge et al., concluded that, quote, carbon dioxide and oxygen levels were significantly above and below, respectively, the ambient workplace standards, unquote, inside the mask. A post-COVID study found that 81% of 128 previously fit healthcare, healthcare workers developed headaches as a result of wearing personal protective equipment, C. Ong and others, 2020. Not only do face masks make it hard to breathe, but the evidence that they even work to stop the spread of coronavirus is limited at best. A popular brand of mask even carries a warning on its packaging that it, quote, will not provide any protection against COVID-19, unquote, as for preventing carriers from spreading the disease, a meta-analysis found, for example, that of eight randomized control trial studies, six found no difference in transmission rates between control and intervention groups, while one found that a combination of masks and hand washing is more effective than education alone, and the other found that N95 masks are more effective than standard surgical masks, Ben Reza et al., 2012. Non-surgical masks, such as scarves and cloths, are almost useless, see Rengasami and others, 2010. Masks may even be unhealthy, causing a buildup of bacteria around the face. See Xi King and others, 2018. The fact that masks don't likely even work brings us to the final reason that wearing one inculcates stupidity and compliance. Through a bombardment of lies, contradictions, and confusion, the state overwhelms your ability to reason clearly. As Theodore Dalrymple wrote, quote, In my study of communist societies, I came to the conclusion that the purpose of communist propaganda was not to persuade or convince, not to inform, but to humiliate. And therefore, the less it corresponded to reality, the better. 
When people are forced to remain silent, when they are being told the most obvious lies, or even worse, when they are forced to repeat the lies themselves, think of all of those pictures on TV of rioters and Antifa and so on barging into restaurants and forcing people to agree with them. Or even worse, when they are forced to repeat the lies themselves, they lose once and for all their sense of probity. To assent to obvious lies is in some small way to become evil oneself. One standing to resist anything is thus eroded and even destroyed. A society of emasculated liars is easy to control, unquote. The point of face masks is not to protect humans, but to diminish humanity, to rob people of their ego, their identity, and their autonomy. Masks are worn by disposable horror movie villains and ignorable background dancers. They make people less than human. Dehumanization is rarely followed by anything good. Face masks are another worrying portent of what's to come, alongside a seismic shift in mainstream discourse. In an analysis of the Rwandan genocide, one of the first linguistic predictors was the tendency to look backwards, to blame and to focus on past wrongs and injustices. Oh, gosh, where have we seen that going on lately? See Donahue 2012 which will sound familiar to anyone unfortunate enough to have read the BBC or The Guardian recently. Similarly, where the Tutsis were referred to as cockroaches by the Hutus and the Nazis depicted Jews as rats, Nancy Pelosi recently promised to fumigate President Trump out of the White House. It's hard to predict how the wheel of life will revolve in the coming years. But all signs point to trouble. During the crisis of a generational cycle, only one thing can be guaranteed, the importance of a clear mind. To that end, allow yourself the dignity, identity, and logos of being human and never, ever wear a mask, unquote. And I have to doff my hat to Mr. Fagan for uh, composing this article because that's exactly what we see going on in this country. It is essential to understand that what's going on in the USA with all of these riots and so on occurred after the, this coronavirus plan scandemic arose and after all of these mask mandates came into existence. And notably, note that those people enforcing these mandates were allowing the protesters, and I'm using that word in quotation marks, to go without masks and commit the most egregious breaches of law. And now they're behind their masks threatening people. So it's not by coincidence or happenstance that any of this is happening. Uh, my little tin pot uh, uh, city dictator here, I'm once again considering the necessity of a move because if this community and this state keeps going that way uh, where everybody is walking around all with their noses and faces in a feeder bag whose utility in stopping the transmission of the disease is not proven, there's not a, a compelling science behind this, and secondly, as far as I'm concerned, it's creating unhealthy conditions and exposing people to other health issues. So we have to get these people either to see reason or force local media to start covering both sides of the story. And if they will not remove our, our money from their sponsors, um, this is going on long enough and it has to stop now. So that's it for my news and views as I light up another COVID repulsor and uh, wish you all the best. There's no vid chat tomorrow. There will be a vid chat a week from tomorrow. So 
uh, hang on because we had a really good vid chat the last time, lots of good questions and comments. But anyway, that's my little COVID rant, and it's not even my rant. It's Patrick Fagan's rant. Check the article out, folks. It's, it's pretty good. Anyway, um, I'll see you on the flip side, everybody. Bye-bye, and God bless.